Finding an old family photograph tucked inside the family Bible or inside a box, a shoebox is always an exciting find for us as genealogy researchers. Unfortunately, most of these photographs that I tend to find are not labeled. In this video, I'm going to walk you through six steps to figuring out who is in those old family photographs. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If we haven't met before, I'm Lisa, genealogy researcher and author. And this YouTube channel is dedicated to helping you find your ancestors, grow your family tree, and not get overwhelmed in the process. So if it sounds like your cup of tea, let's get started. Now you have an old family photograph or two that you're trying to figure out who is it actually a photograph of? You're not sure. Well, let's walk through some steps to start narrowing down and try to figure out who that individual is. The first thing you want to do is to sit back and consider how did you come to possess that old family photo? Did you find it online or in somebody else's family tree? Did you receive it from a relative who sent it to you? And if a relative sent it to you or somebody just said, here's a box of old family photographs, find out how they came to possess that photograph or those photographs and keep that line of questioning going as far back as you can to determine who owned this photograph over time. I know you're wondering why I want you to question so much about who owned this photograph before you and how it came to you. And that is because at a minimum, it helps to narrow down which side of the family, the family tree that this photograph belongs to. If you know that this photograph came to you through a maternal aunt, then you know that this photograph is part of that side, your maternal side of the family tree. So you've already narrowed down the possibilities for that individual in that photograph by 50%. It's not your paternal side of the tree or your father's side of the tree. But if you know from that aunt where she got it from, you can start to even narrow that paternal side down further. Now there will be times when you really have no other information on that particular photograph. You're not even sure how you got it, or maybe you do know how you received it, but that's it. You have no idea any other information on that particular photo. And that's okay because it happens. But whether you know more about that photo or not, don't give up and do not be tempted to skip this step. Now, if you are like me and you are struggling at times to figure out who is in those old family photographs, and I'm still working through some, hit that like button and let me know. Now, the next step in figuring out who is in this family photograph is to really kind of figure out how old is this photograph and when it could have been taken. And to do that, we need to determine what type of photograph that you're looking at. Now, by narrowing down the date or the age of that photograph, that date of when it could possibly be taken, that helps you to narrow down who could potentially be in that photograph and who could not. For example, if you suspect that that photograph that you have is of John Brown, who was born in 1900, but your photograph is actually a carte de visite with a gentleman wearing a 1870s style of outfit, well, then you know it can't be John Brown because he wasn't born until 1900. So it helps you to understand who it could be and who it could not be. Now, the very first photograph ever taken was in 1826 by a French gentleman of whose name I'm going to completely mispronounce. But here goes. It's Joseph Neopis? Neopis? We're going to go with that. But it wasn't until the 1840s that photography was actually kind of starting to make a commercial, become a commercial business. Those early photographs were known as daguerreotypes. The daguerreotype is that those photos in those little hinged cases. And the ambrotype is very similar to that. They are also in the, the little hinged cases, but they use a different developing process. Both of those are actually very fragile very sensitive to light and can fade quite easily and not very easy to find. Typically the photographs of the past generations that I see in my genealogy research are the cabinet cards, the carte de visites, the tin type, and then the more traditional kind of paper type of photograph that we start to see in the 1900s. The tin type was used from the mid 1850s to the 1890s and many of the surviving ones actually show wear and tear or small scratches. 
The carte de visite, or as many call them, the CDV, first came about in 1859 and was typically studio photos of individuals. The photo was mounted on a thicker cardboard and they were actually quite small, oftentimes around that two by three size. The cabinet card became popular in the 1860s and all the way up into the early 1900s. Again, they were the photographs, you will see them on those thicker cardboard type of mountings. The cabinet card though was much larger than the CDV. The backings on the cabinet cards, as well as those CDVs, vary in color as well as in thickness, and that can help to determine an age on a particular photograph. In the early 1900s, the Brownie camera was introduced to the general population by Kodak. And for the first time, the general population could take affordable photographs. And did my great grandmother and her friends in the early 1900s ever embrace that technology? And thank goodness she did, because that's how I got most of my old family photographs. After you've kind of gotten a general idea for when that photograph was taken, you want to look at the fashions. Now, I am not an expert on the style or fashions of the decades, but I do have reference books and I know how to search online for examples of what I'm looking for. So as a genealogy researcher, why should I care about fashions and what they were wearing? Clothing and hairstyles give us a clue as to when a particular photograph was actually taken. Because just like we want to wear the latest styles, we want to have the latest haircut, when we have our photographs taken, so did our ancestors. Remember, they're not that different than you and me. Open up a search tab on your computer and Google women's clothing styles late 1850s or men's hats, 1910s. Compare your search results with the photograph you have so that you can start to narrow down the fashions that you see in your photograph and be able to put a date to them. Now, here's a tip when you're trying to kind of evaluate those fashions that you see in the old family photograph with those reference photographs you're seeing online. Look at, say for instance, in a, women, a woman's dress, look at how the sleeves fit. Are they fitted snug or are they loose? Are they poofy up top here, but narrowed down at the wrist? What, how is the skirt shaped? Was it a high waist, a low waist? For a man, look at the suit coat. Is it double breasted? Is it single breasted? What type of collar or tie is the gentleman wearing? These are all clues to fashions for a certain era. And they can all help you narrow down the date or the time period a particular photograph was taken. Now, if you're enjoying learning about old family photographs, be sure and hit that subscribe button down in the bottom right hand corner and you'll be notified when I post new videos here at the Are You My Cousin YouTube channel. Okay, so let's get on to step number four. We're already at step number four and that is to take a really close look at the photographer. Look at your photograph closely. Can you see a photographer's name or mark on that particular photograph? Is there a location or like a city Knowing the photographer and the location where that photograph was taken will help to put that individual who's had their picture taken, the subject of the photograph, in a particular time and place. Now you may need to actually research that particular photographer a bit in city directories and the census records to learn a little bit more about him and the years that he may have been in business to narrow the date of that, that photograph down even further. For example, if you have a photograph and the photographer's name and his location is Washington, D.C., well then when it comes to figuring out who that individual is in the photograph, you want to look for your ancestor who lived in that area or perhaps traveled to that area, was known to have been in that area. If that person in the photograph looks like your ancestor who may have lived in Texas but who never traveled and never left Texas, then he's not going to be the gentleman in D.C. Now, next up, when it comes to really figuring out who, who's in that family photograph, is to actually turn to your family tree. You've narrowed the date down. You know which, you've kind of narrowed down the, which side of the family it is from those first steps. So the next few steps, we were looking at the date, trying to narrow down the date as much as we can. We can actually get fairly specific sometimes, looking at the type of photograph, looking at the um, fashions, looking at the photographer. We've narrowed down when that photograph could have been taken and even perhaps where it was taken based on that photographer's mark. So let's start looking into our family trees to see if anybody could match those particular parameters that we're seeing. Look at your family tree and really determine 
who is a likely candidate for that particular photograph, for that location, that date, that time period, and realize that you are likely going to come up with more than one candidate, and that's okay. When this happens, what you want to do at that point is then to go a little bit deeper into each of those individuals, research those individuals more to see if you can place them in the right location at the right time, or if you can find another photograph that would give you a hint or a clue to their appearance in that photograph. Now, once you get to this point, and I've gotten to this point on a number of my photographs, then what I do is then I get more eyes on the photograph itself. If you know which side of the family that photograph is from, as we have determined earlier in the process, get it in front of the relatives, get it in front of other researchers, tell them your theory of who you think it is and see if they can corroborate that or if they have other ideas as well. Post it in family Facebook groups, post it in genealogical society Facebook groups you might be a member of. Email it to other cousins. I know that this can sound like a long shot, but I did this. I had a several photographs. I knew that they were likely a certain family line. I knew they were probably in Virginia, but I wasn't 100% sure. And so I reached out to a genealogical society for that local area where my ancestors generally lived. A gentleman reached out to me and said, I don't know that particular family line, but I know somebody who does. And he put me in contact with that gentleman. He was able to identify a number of my photographs that I had because it turns out I had one of the photographs in question was actually his grandparents. Now this gentleman lived 3,000 miles away from me. He's my third cousin, twice removed. So quite far from me on the family tree and physical distance. Yet I had his grandparents in a photograph in my closet. So while I could get the time period down and I could get the date down, I was struggling to get the actual persons in that photograph. But by get, taking that next step, getting those people, getting more people's eyes on that particular photograph, I was able to get it identified. So make that effort to reach out, make that extra step. And the bonus is I had another researcher who was researching the same family line and we were able to share other information as well. Will you always be able to identify who was in your old family photographs? Unfortunately, no. The reality is identifying individuals in your old family photographs takes time, sometimes a lot of time, for the right clue or the right person to get their eyes on that particular photograph. I've been diligently working to identify all the photographs in my old family photos collection, and I'm about 75 to 80% there. And while I still have a chunk to go, I started at pretty much 10 per, knowing 10%. But by going through these strategies, I've been able to continually make progress and get these photographs identified, and you will be able to as well. Now, if you're thinking, Lisa, I am ready to tackle that box of unknown photographs in my closet, I've got an ebook to help you do just that. Head over to lisalisten.com forward slash ID dash photos to learn more and get started.